Welcome to our first video of 2024 and we are hoping you all had a happy holidays and a happy new year and we are so excited for all the adventure in 2024 and just all the places we'll go and see and I'm not sure if we're going to take it fast, take it slow, we're still figuring out a couple things but our new year is not starting with the craziest adventure, we are actually staying in a parking lot of a Planet Fitness and we used to do a lot of parking lot camping depending on where we were, like the East Coast had a lot of parking lot camping but it's been a while since we've done this, probably at least six months, but there is a reason why. So we got boxes and we got packing tape and you might be asking yourself, what could they possibly be doing with that? And we are moving some stuff out of our space. So we have a lot of seasonal stuff that we actually don't need all year round. And so instead of just letting it clutter our space, we got some boxes, we got some tape, we're gonna pack some stuff away and put it away because we don't need bikes in the winter and we don't need our ski boots in the summer. And since we're planning on having a little bit of a warmer winter, we're gonna put away some of our cold gear and also some of our warmer gear. We're not really sure exactly what we're putting away, but we're excited to put it away. First things first is to make these boxes. The one thing I do not is 100% going is our tailgate that's on the roof. It's just so much nicer not having that there. So that'll go in there, plus a bunch of other things. But let's make these boxes and kind of go through some stuff and see what we're keeping and then what we're going to store just for now. So here's a good example of some things that we're going to be storing that we don't want to get rid of, we just don't need right now. For example, the Milepost book is huge and it really helped us with planning through Canada and Alaska, but it just honestly in a small space like this takes up lots of room and we have a lot of other books that we don't necessarily want to get rid of, we just don't really have anywhere to put them. So these are perfect examples of things that need to be stored somewhere else. We are totally just emptying out everything up here and going through it. And we did not realize how many games we have. We're very big game people, but we just don't have that much time to play. So we're only keeping the small ones. And all of the bigger ones are going to be going in the box. We've got this a lot more organized. This is our laundry and all of our laundry detergent and stuff behind it. We have games, dog stuff in here. Hand warmers. And then hand warmers. And then this is all food related stuff. We have our almond cow and then extra sauces and all that kind of stuff down there and some flour and good stuff over there maybe protein powder will go here just random stuff yeah but we did organize up above our dinette and take a lot of stuff out and put stuff in storage i think we're going to save a lot more space back here because we do use this as our storage area and there's a lot more items that we don't use here than anywhere else So far we've got the box from inside. This box is in our back seat with just some extra random stuff. Two extra chairs. This box is about ready to be done with just some stuff that was in our back seat and extra stuff. And we're getting ready to open this up. This has some of our camping gear, but since it's cold, I don't think we're gonna need it anytime soon. So we're going to be storing that away as well as our bikes. We've been driving down some sandy, sandy roads and we haven't opened this in a while. And everything's a little bit sandy, besides the other side. So clean, dirty, clean, dirty. Oh, there there, yeah. Dirty, <laughs> clean, dirty, clean. You get the point. Yikes. We 
have way more than we expected that we're going to be putting in the storage unit. We have three boxes full and then a couple of extra things. The bikes are still on here. We're gonna put all of this stuff in, then come back for the bikes and the tailgate. This place is pretty secure. You need a code to get in the front, unless they're open. So before they're open, you need a code. After the close, you need a code. Then we're on a different floor. We're not on the first floor and there's three floors here. So it's kind of cool is that you need a code to get to the, to get the elevator. So pretty secure, I'm loving it. Oh. <laughs> Here's where our stuff's gonna be living. We've got a nice place. It's brand new, this facility. It's only been open two months, so. I mean, it looks brand new. We're definitely the first people to use this unit. You can see like there's still construction dust. I should have brought a room to get it out. But um, yeah, it looks pretty homey. What size do we go for? It's a five by five. We're gonna go five by 10. I'm hoping we don't get that much stuff, but we actually got a lot of stuff that we don't need currently. We use all of this. We use about 89, 92% of this. That's very specific. But we use most of this. Well, that took all of about five minutes to get done. And we still have so much space. You think five I'm, minutes? If even, right? Yeah, if even. I'm so glad we didn't go for the bigger unit because there would have been so much room. Now we just need to get our tailgate and our bikes and we should be set. Oh my gosh, do not lock me in here. We got everything to fit in here and surprisingly we still have so much room but it's also crazy looking at all this stuff and realizing that it all just came out of our camper right now we're really hoping that this is a temporary solution we have a couple other things in mind that might be better than this but for right now this is going to work perfectly and we're just you know glad that it all worked out bye for now see you later We felt like we got so much out of our camper the other day and put so much in storage, but it still seems like there is just so much stuff. So we might just have to go through and get rid of some of the stuff that we don't need anymore. But right now we're actually about to head to a friend's house and we're gonna drop off our camper because our truck needs to get some work done. We've been having some problems with the headlights and tail lights that they won't work, then they will work, then they won't work. And we've been trying to make an appointment and get into a Ford and every place has just been so many months out. We ended up finding one in the Vegas area that does have an appointment. So we're gonna do that in the morning, but they did say that we should probably take the camper off even though they work with the campers on. They said either way's fine, but our friend said, hey, just drop it off and then we should be able to use his car and everything because we don't know how long it's gonna take or anything like that. We have just made it now, we're getting ready to park and now is our least favorite part of taking the camper off the truck. It's not that it's hard to do, it's literally just a press of a button, but going up on the little camper jack legs is so scary, especially when it's windy like it is right now. So fingers crossed, wish us luck. And on top of that, as you could probably tell, it's getting nice and dark, so we're gonna be doing this in the dark, so fun. First things first is we have to take this box off. So thankfully we took the bikes off to make this one step easier because usually when we take the bikes off, then take the, it's a whole hassle. So thankfully the bikes are off. We're gonna take this box off and I'm gonna try to take it off in one go instead of taking this entire thing apart because that's a hassle. And I think it's gonna be a little less of a hassle just taking it off. So let's get to it and then take the camper off, which I'm not excited about at all, but we gotta do it. Is it moving? I'm not sure. Um, yeah, very slowly, see? Yeah, I just gotta keep warming it out. It kind of just moved back in, to be honest. There you go. There we go. Got it. Yay! That was not that bad. Yeah, I've already had it three quarters <laughs> of the way out. There wasn't much for you to do anymore at that point. It wasn't that bad. Yeah, I've already it. so helpful. In order to get the camper off, we gotta take these tie downs off. And they all have pins like this, but actually one of them was missing a pin. So it's funny because I don't walk around the truck and like make sure I have pins on every single time I'm about to drive. But good thing this is happening because now we know we're missing one and I can go get one while our truck's at the shop.
y'all taking the camper off the truck is one of the scariest things just having it suspended in the air and then if you move all four of the jacks sometimes they don't actually go down equally so you have to do them individually and then the camper goes a little back and forth situation and it just feels like it's going to tip over i know it's happened before i know it's not often so it's not likely that it would happen but it's still super scary but i'm glad it's off the truck and we're all good a little bit of a chilly morning here but it's always so funny having the camper off the truck it looks so weird because we literally never take it off and i'm not the biggest fan of being inside of it without being on the truck so we're hoping this doesn't take too long time to get this truck in for some service driving in the truck without the camper on feels so strange it's so stiff we have added leaves so every little bump you go over you feel it like crazy whereas when the camper is on and all that weight is back there you really don't feel that much when you go over the bumps. so it's just such a weird feeling so we're here at the Ford Service Department and it looks like we might be leaving the truck for at least the entire day and we might have to come back tomorrow. So this dealership ordered us a lift to anywhere we wanted to go that was like within reasonable distance. So we're gonna go work a little bit and we're gonna catch up with you guys when we get a call about the truck. We're hoping that we don't have to leave until tomorrow, but we might have to, who knows. Today is the third day that our truck has been in the shop and we were just pulling up to our office, AKA Panera to work a little bit and I was gonna call Ford right when I was about to step out of the truck we got a call from Ford and they said, you're gonna have to tell me the story on this because I don't know how this is possible, but your lights, your tail lights were just dead, which could have been the case in there. I just never looked at the tail lights because they were under the camper, whole thing. And the headlight was just also out, supposedly, even though it was a new bulb, but you were missing your entire 50 fuse, the fuse that goes to the lights in the fuse box, which is under the hood. And I was like, I don't really have a story. I've never pulled the fuses. I've only looked at them from the top. I have no idea what's, how that could happen. But instead of going to work, we're gonna go pick up the truck and then go back to work. Literally two minutes after we started driving, we got a call back and she said, I'm sorry, I read the notes wrong. The tech said that they need to replace the light but that it hasn't been replaced yet. And it's really expensive to replace it through them. So we're hoping that we can just replace it on our own. So Grayson said, can they let me know what I need to get and I can just replace it on my own? And they said, we're gonna, gonna ask basically and see if that's recommended or if it's not. But uh, yeah, so I guess back to Panera and I'm hoping we get our truck today. <laughs> it's been a couple hours now. Our truck's ready. Let's pick it up. It's not actually done. We still have to replace the headlights, but we'll talk more about it once we have the truck. out forward we are back at the camper and we are just so happy that the fix for the truck was something so simple as the fuse wasn't in the right spot but it's kind of weird because i've never actually touched the fuse box i've just looked at it to make sure everything was in order and i guess i overlooked that so they put a new 50 amp fuse in they replaced the two tail lights which i thought the tail lights had something to do with the front headlight and the fuse but i guess not they were just needed to be replaced. So they replaced those. We do need to replace our headlight, so we're gonna order a new bulb for the headlight so it matches the other ones. And we're excited to get our truck back on the camper and get back on the road. See you back out there.